Eva Kaur is a Holocaust survivor who shares her story with the world, but more importantly shares her lessons from what she learned from the Holocaust with the world to help the world become a better place. And the students that we have here and some of the staff were fortunate enough to be able to make the trip to Terre Haute, Indiana, where her teaching center and museum is located to hear Eva Kaur speak in person about her experiences in the Holocaust and what she learned from them and her message for us all as we move forward um, in this world. Eva's story, she grew up uh, in a small village in, in Hungary, I believe, and she was, our family was Jewish. They were uh, outcast, of course, in their village. She had a horrible experience, it sounds like in school, where they, where they, all the math problems were like adding up how to kill Jews and things like that. And as World War II took place, her family was rounded up um, by the Nazis and uh, packed onto cattle cars with other Jews and sent to Auschwitz. At this point in World War II's history, uh, the Nazis were no longer using Jews as slave labor. They were trying to kill them off as quickly as possible. So almost immediately after um, she arrived at Auschwitz, uh, her family was taken from her and her, um, they were all killed, um, presumably by the, in the gas chambers, no real records of what exactly happened as they did not keep records besides a death certificate for everyone that died in each killing. Um, but she was ripped from her family. Last time she see them is, out, is on the, uh, where the trains come in at Auschwitz. Um, she and her twin sister were spared um, at least a quick death because um, they were going to be subject to the famous twin experiments that the um, Nazis did and Joseph Mingley did. Um, and so they were immediately packed away and sent um, to horrible barracks in freezing cold conditions with just the dresses they had on and where they were subjugated to horrible experiments, uh, being poked and prodded at, uh, forced to be naked for hours on end, um, and then injected with even more horribly with horrible substances that we don't even know what they, she says she doesn't even know what she was injected with. Um, throughout it all, um, survival was a, a very rare thing in Auschwitz. It was much easier to die, as Eva said, and her family was murdered and she really could have easily been murdered herself through the, through the experiments. Um, but she had a, she made a decision right at the beginning that she was going to do everything in her power to survive. And she held a vision of herself walking out of the camp. Um, I think holding that vision and the decision and the willpower that she mustered, um, to en help her endure these incredible traumas and helped her to help her sister survive as well. Um, she saw, horrible atrocities, she experienced horrible things, um, was given two weeks to live by the Nazi doctors and given no support to help survive because um, they wanted her to die so they could see what happened to her organs and then they were going to kill her sister and compare their organs. Um, but she managed to survive, um, to persist um, throughout the horrible winters with no heat and no um, extra clothing to persist through starvation diets, um, little or no food at all, to persist um, in terrible mental conditions, crowded, dirty, um, rats everywhere. Um, and she, she survived all of it. So she survived, you know, survives it all. She tells her story um, and it's just shocking the, the levels of cruelty uh, in her story. But that's not the main point here. The main point is what she did after she was relieved. She was able over time to deal with her own trauma, um, forgive everyone, um, forgiving one of the Nazi doctors in person, writing a letter, a public letter to forgive everyone else and truly forgive everyone in her heart. Um, and then she went on to teach and share with the rest of the world. Um, she, she easily could have just survived and gone about a normal life, but she's chosen to give him back, give back to the world, um, teach forgiveness, share the story of the Holocaust, and she created this Candles Museum in Terre Haute, Indiana, and Teaching Center, which is kind of the platform um, where she shares her ideas and her story with the world, which has been so inspiring to so many people. Eva's second part of her lecture talks about the lessons she's learned throughout her incredible life. She talks about the, the value of being the unique version of yourself that you are. There's only one person that is you. You have to be yourself and you have to fight to be yourself. Um, even after World War II, 
when um, she was um, in communist hands, the communists tried to indoctrinate her and make her submit to uh, their ideas. Um, she was able to stand up for herself. Um, and even after going through so much in World War II, stand up to the, or to the communists and escape to Israel and eventually to the United States. Um, so she really talks to talk to everyone about being yourself. She talks about the value of learning. She said, read as much as possible. Educate yourself as much as possible. Be kind to others, obviously. Um, treat others you want to be, as you want to be treated. Clean up the world around you. If she said, if everyone does a little, it all adds up to much, much more. Of course, she talks about prejudice. Do not tolerate it. Bring it out into the open. Um, bring injustice out into the open. She talks about some of the tweets that she sends out, um, giving evidence to unfair practices around the world. Um, she said it's got to be brought out into the open so that it can be stopped. Um, and, you know, she realizes that, it, you know, there was nothing going to stop what the Nazis did during the Holocaust except for, um, you know, the Americans, the Russians, and the people that came in and actually physically stopped it. And, you know, there's, she said there's places around the world where nothing is being done to stop this prejudice, to, to stop the injustices. Probably the most valuable thing that Eva taught us was the power of forgiveness. She made a great point, which I completely agree with, is that when you hold on to anger and animosity towards others, you are really just harming yourself. And so she was able to forgive the Nazis. And she said it was a huge lift off of herself. All that anger just went away. All that hatred just went away. And she was like a new person, revived. And she offers a great process for forgiveness. She said if someone has wronged you badly, that's a toxic relationship. You don't have to necessarily go face to face that person and forgive them um, in person. But just imagine them being in front of you and write a letter to them about all that they've done to you and that you totally and completely forgive them and, and believe that letter, believe it in your heart and let it all go. She says forgiveness is something that's not taught in schools and needs to be um, and it's so critical for your emotional well-being. She says you cannot hold on to grudges. You cannot. Uh, doing that because all you're doing is harming yourself and and she publicly forgave the Nazis in a ceremony at Auschwitz and she forgave one of the doctors um, and she's privately forgave uh, you know even Dr. Mengele who did all these horrible experiments on her um, you know within her own mind which has allowed her to let go of her hatred and her anger towards the Nazis and what happened to her what do I take from the experience well her you know, the choice she made and the incredible will that she had to survive. If you can survive that, you know, you can do about anything. She was able, she made a choice to sur survive. Of course, the choice wasn't totally up to her, but she endured her conditions. And most of the twins that were tortured and experimented on died in Auschwitz. Um, it was her will to survive. The choice that she made and the vision that she held until she escaped to see, to see that herself walking out of there that I think kept her going and helped her make the right decisions and aligned her mind to make the right decisions and to receive the guidance that she needed to survive Auschwitz. Of course, the, the most powerful thing is that issue of forgiveness, how she was able to forgive everyone. If she can forgive the Nazis, she can forgive Dr. Mengele. Um, we can for, forgive anyone in our life. Um, and, and that takes that burden off of ourselves, that, that, that anger and that burden. And then she devoted her life to humble service, teaching, um, the lessons from what she has experienced. She could have easily gone away, lived a quiet life, but she chose to um, humbly, matter of factly, um, reach thousands of people with the ideas of forgiveness and help trying to help to make a world a better place. She, she created her own museum, created her own teaching center. It was burned down by more hatred in the early 2000s. She just kept going, had it, had it rebuilt, and she's still going today. Uh, well into her 80s. So Eva Kaur is a very inspiring person and her her lesson on forgiveness I think is, is just really really valuable um, but her lessons on learning and her will of survival and just the way she's lived her life is an inspiration uh, to us all as well and there's a lot we can learn from it. So um, check her out, um, look her up on the internet um, if you get a chance to see the Candles Museum if you're around Terre Haute, Indiana or you get a chance to see her speak um, I would say it's definitely worth the trip um, and I definitely think she has a message that is a very positive one for the entire world.